ChatGPT is the end of the internet. This is a very tall statement to make. And I think a lot of people still underestimate what AI actually does. A lot of people think, well, I have a website, I need a nice text for that website. So instead of me writing that text, I have the AI write the text for me. And that's already what AI is. But that is not what AI is. And this is why ChatGPT is not just ending the internet, it is also the future of the internet. If you have used ChatGPT, you know that it's creating answers for you specifically for your individual question. And of course, you might know that one of the biggest investors in ChatGPT is Microsoft. At the start, they invested $1 billion into that technology. Then later, they invested $10 billion into that technology. This is how important that is before it is even out there, before it is even a real product, it is worth that much. And actually, it is worth a lot more. Now, let's think about again, what does ChatGPT do? And why is it changing things so much? Well, when you go to Bing, which is the Microsoft version of Google, and you're looking for an answer, and you get the answer right on Bing, you don't have to go to a website anymore. Why would you go to a list of pages, look for the right pages, go on that page, read through the text, try to figure out the answer, which is most of the time not really what you wanted to have as an answer, and try, and try to figure out how this answer can be applied to your problem if instead you have an AI giving you the exact answer that you're looking for. So at that point, why would you even need a website? Why would you even go to a website? Which also means why would people even create websites and put information on there if people don't visit it anymore. So the mode on how information is coming to you is changing in a big way. And you have to consider at that point how we consume information and how this has changed a lot with, for example, the creation of social media with the creation of web 2.0 as it was called before social media. Now back in the day you only had websites and if you wanted to know something you would go on that website for example for news. You would go to BBC, to CNN, any kind of other page out there and you would to read through the articles. But you don't do that anymore, right? If you consume news I'm pretty sure most of you consume the news through social media. You go to YouTube, you go to Facebook, and then you see the headlines, you read through that, then you go to the comments, maybe you argue with someone, that is the consumption of news. And this is very fluent. This is very integrated in your daily life because you have your phone all the time with you. This is why on Amazon, you don't have a form you need to go through to fill out information. You have a one click buy button because information needs to flow very fast. So with ChatGPT, the way information flows is again changing from needing to go out there to look for the information to having the information individualized come to you. Now at that point, let's have a look at how Bing is actually integrating that. So right now you can't use ChatGPT on Bing, but they are already presenting it to you as if you could to prepare their community. So right now, here it says, ask me anything, me, as if you would speak with a person. And then below that, you have your buttons to try out the AI to give you answers. Now, here are some examples of how that looks. And this here is a classic example where the question is, I need to throw a dinner party for six people who are vegetarian. Can you suggest a three course menu with a chocolate dessert? So in that case, it gives you here some suggestions on the right side, but then also these are linking to different websites where you can find that information. So all of that is still very classic. But of course, as we know from ChatGPT, this is not actually how we want to use that. So here in the second example, the question is, plan me a workout for my arms and abs with no sit-ups and no gym equipment. It should 
only take 30 minutes. In this case, actually, the AI is writing out for you a complete training plan, also describing each of the exercises and how to do that. Now, there's also always links in here to websites, but you are good just reading the text. Of course, still, this is a classic view where we have websites here on the left side. We also have some videos that you can use for training, but you can already imagine that these results will not 100% fit what you're asking for. Now, of course, in this example, because this is a Microsoft example, the first video exactly fits what we want to have. Now, here we have another example where it says, write code to find the Fibonacci sequence in Python. And here we don't have any search results. This is just giving you the code. And of course, as we know with ChatGPT, you can then ask the AI to explain to you the code. Maybe if you find errors into here to correct the code, it can give you feedback on the code on what is going on. So you can not just have the code, but also understand and learn how it works. And if it doesn't work in the software where you want to use it, you can ask the AI to correct it so it fits and the AI knows what you said before. So it can go back and actually correct its own errors and even make statements on these errors. Of course, when we scroll down here, you can see that still we have search results down here in a classic way, as you would find on Google. But the main screen up here is occupied by just the AI and just the answers. And of course, you would go on with the conversation because not only is that information more individualized to whatever you specifically need, but also because you are in a direct conversation with an artificial person and this helps you much more than a static text on the internet. So what is the overall meaning of that? One thing you can see here very clearly is that static information is a thing of the past. You won't go through texts or books or just long lines of information anymore that are filled with things that you actually don't want to look at that you're not actually searching for. And this is exactly how the flow of information is going to happen in the future. You get exactly the bit you need. And then and only then when you need something more, you ask the AI to give you additional information. And this brings me to the final statement of this video, because the age that we are in right now is called the age of information because what we do is handling information. So when you think about the past of the other stages of our society, we had a agriculture stage where we went out and actually work with our hands on the field. Then you had an industrial stage where you would work still with your hands, but in production halls on production bands. But this was then also done by machines. So now most of the people out there, they work in skyscrapers, just handling information for customers, for orders, for all of the processes that are going on. And of course, the internet that we have right now is a huge pool of information, most of it in long form text. Now ChatGPT is the end of that because we get the information where we need it and how we need it. So this brings us basically from an age of information to an age of curation because you get the information you need. You have to decide what information you need and what to do with that. And of course, the AI can help you also do these things. And your involvement in most of that information flow is just to decide what is going to happen next. Now, you might think, well, this is taking the creativity and the ingenuity out of everything. But it is not really the case. Because think about, for example, like a film. One of the most important persons in a film is the director of the movie. Because even though he isn't doing anything in the project other than directing and all of the other people on the team do everything else, all the vision, all the creative decisions, everything that brings this complete project together and makes it into an artwork is coming through the decisions of the director. So this is where the future of ChatGPT is heading with Microsoft. And we will see what other solutions company like Google have with BART. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye.
Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.